Hello. Hello, Andrew. Nice to nice to speak to you. Yes, nice to speak to you. Thank you for joining us again. That's right, anyways. Andrew, huge congratulations on getting through to the final. Thank you very much. Uh, that must have been an exciting but nerve-wracking experience. Yes, yeah, yeah, very nerve-wracking. I mean, I had always hoped to make it to the final, but until you're there, um, you don't really know what it's going to feel like. And, and once you're in the tent and it's just three of you, you just it feels so empty. You know, especially with Jane and Candice on one side and me on the other. I just had a whole half of the tent to myself. So um, it really was the final show, and um, yeah, the final show stuff was a bit manic for all five hours. Yeah, um, but uh, the, I think one of the things that everyone watching was was salivating over was that uh, that chocolate cake. Was your grandmother actually proud of the fact that her recipe impressed Paul Hollywood so much? You know what? I haven't actually had a chance to speak to her yet, and I must I must give her a call. <laughs> um, it's been all been so manic. Everyone everyone's been asking me about the chocolate cake actually, but it seemed like an appropriate way to finish. I've always loved it. We have that chocolate cake at every birthday and it seemed a really appropriate way to finish the whole experience just um, with with a nod to one of the first things I ever had that she made and that I helped make so um, it was quite a nice uh, final turn for me Oh, it must have been really difficult not telling her about that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, it really was. It was really difficult not telling anyone, actually. Um, I had to keep it under my hat for so long because that the final was filmed, you know, back in June time. So it's been a long time since knowing the result and everything to keeping it quiet right up until Wednesday evening. So, yeah, it's a bit of a relief to finally be able to be totally, totally open with everyone. Jane and Candice. They're going on a road trip without you. Uh, what's that all about? Yeah, no, well, a surprise to me as well. I saw that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think they, they both have a love of French things, so I imagine they might be going on a little trip to France together. But yeah, no, I, I haven't had an invite yet. You know, if I'm invited, I'd love to go, but I don't know, otherwise I might just go on a, a motorbike trip to Salafi or something. <laughs> Well, I think that sounds more fun personally but <laughs> yeah but think about it um, when you're carrying cakes on a motorbike that's uh... yeah you can get those little you can get those sort of pack things that like hang over the side can't you and you can, you can have a backpack yeah well I, and... I could be in the sidecar with the goggles <laughs> <laughs> I, suddenly that's a perfect mental image right there yeah I yeah like, I know, I know. <laughs> so soggy bottoms at the last hurdle when it came to those tarts and quiches on Wednesday night have you tried baking them again since or are they things you now want to avoid you know what? I've made I've made the tart or a variation on the tart since, and I know exactly where I went wrong with those. It was a case of the wrong glaze, just soaking into the pastry. So I've made them again since with a different glaze on top, and they've come out really, really nicely. So yeah, I think I've I've learned from my mistakes, and you know, different things happen on the day. So I don't begrudge it or anything. You know, it, it's just one of those things that just didn't quite go right on the day. But Candace definitely pulled it out of the bag and uh, a worthy winner because she was faultless throughout the whole final oh yeah when you were putting the glaze on the tarts I thought oh my god they're the most beautiful things I've ever seen <laughs> and then when <laughs> Paul picked it up I was like no and then, and then it just slowly it was awful oh. to watch because they were so crisp when they came out of the oven and then I just saw them I saw the liquid just running off and running in and then we lifted it up I was so glad because i had been so careful to get them really thin and really crisp and yeah, then I shouting yeah, at the just, TV. just to see it flop like that off the plate but you know that that's what Bake Off it wouldn't be Bake Off if it didn't have the odd disaster <laughs> One thing I did really love seeing was uh, that very good-looking spreadsheet you were using. Oh, yes. Do you have any top Excel tips for our listeners? The more colours, the better, generally. Uh, <laughs> <Love> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you thought I had a little legend. It was a little colour key for stuff going in the oven, because then I could look across and see if I'd double book my oven. I had chilling, was like blue or dark blue, so I could see how many shelves I was using. There was there was much deeper meaning to the spreadsheet than, than met the eye in the brief glimpse. So, oh, wow. so it wasn't uh, just yeah. the five-minute timings? No, it wasn't the five minute timings. Nice. It had organising the oven, organising the fridge. Yeah, and then every five minutes of every bake in tandem was planned out. So I tell you, what, putting that together was a bit of a challenge in itself. But hats off to the other two because they didn't have a spreadsheet and they absolutely cracked it and <laughs> did, it, did it without. So clearly they're better multitaskers than I am. I make a detailed plan when I'm doing Christmas dinner. I have every five minutes. <laughs> So I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm on team spreadsheets. But but thinking of that, team Andrew, you've got a huge fan base now. Uh, team Andrew was trending on Twitter during the final. Uh, you've had people travelling across the country to hear you sing in concerts. How are you finding your newfound fame? Uh, you know, I, I'm just riding riding the wave at the moment and enjoying it. it it's been a bit mad, especially that that 
lovely girl actually I met her who, who travels all across the country with a poor dad I think I came from north of London up to Derby to see a concert that I was singing in which was totally mad but you know everyone's been overwhelmingly positive and especially in Derby and back in Northern Ireland everyone's just been so keen to get behind me and it, it's been really nice and I'm looking forward to now we've got a, a book tour in the next couple of days so we'll get into Manchester Birmingham London and then um, back in Belfast on Saturday so it'll be really nice just to see all the fans face to face because Twitter is one thing but actually meeting people and getting to see them is, is something that I'm really looking forward to Yes, I noticed that you tweeted about the book tour uh, and I also read in the Radio Times that you're keen to do more TV baking so what does the future hold for the cake smith? So very much keeping my options open at the moment but you know I've been thinking a lot about it recently and I'd love to use it as a bit of a launch pad to get into science and engineering broadcasting or you know something on, on the TV side because I think there's probably an appetite for more popular engineering type shows on the TV so in, in the short term I'm definitely going to lap up all the stuff that comes with Bake Off and the live baking dem- demos and I'm going to keep on baking and bringing my precision brand of baking to the table but longer term I'd really love to segue into science education and that type of thing things that weren't possible a year ago and now are mm. potentially becoming an opportunity with Bake Off so just uh, embracing it with both arms Well as chronicles that are indeed geeky we wholeheartedly support that idea we are, you're always welcome back <laughs> Yes <laughs> <laughs> Thank you <laughs> We've been looking at food on the show this week, um, particularly sort of future foods or foods that aren't quite foods. <laughs> Um, so we've been trying things like cheese in a can and uh, meal replacement powders, things like that. We're not really impressed. Do you have any thoughts on sort of future food? You know, I tried one of uh, one of my colleagues recently started using one of those nutritional powder. It's like the totally nutritionally complete powder that you can have for every meal. Yeah, this is, this um, is one of the things we've been trying. <laughs> yeah, and he, he brought it into the office and I have to say I wasn't convinced. It was kind of like vanilla mush, but he he, he just sees food as fuel so he just thought it was the best thing ever and he could just have his powder for lunch fill it with water and he was happy as Larry I don't think he'd do it for every meal but that's been my only experience of, of that kind of thing and I have to say I wasn't convinced he'd give me a sandwich any day uh, yeah it just takes the joy out of food for me but as as we were researching all of this future food we discovered the uh, the travesty that is no more tea bags which is tea in an aerosol can would you drink tea out of an aerosol can well, I mean it sounds intriguing I don't know. I mean, I thought part of the part of the joy of tea was kind of the the steeping it, the pouring, the process as much as the result. So I don't know if I'm totally sold on the aerosol can. But you know, if it tastes great, then yeah, why not? I suppose. I mean, f- food's moving more with that hest and everything. Food's moving in a bit more of a techie direction. But tea in a can, not so sure. Yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> I love the whole process of teapot and everything I, yeah. feel, I feel like that's part of the that's part of the relaxation is kind of making the tea and then it's kind of the mentally rewarding process of then when you sit down with the tea it just gets the dopamine receptors going <laughs> indeed lastly and slightly fitting with the spooky time of year bugs as snacks uh, we talked to Dr Jenny Josephs in this show about the health and environmental benefits of eating insects would you bake a bug cake if you had the chance you know that's that's intriguing I think if anyone was going to put a bug in a cake it was probably going to be Tom um, <laughs> <laughs> his experimental flavours so I don't know maybe some dried bugs powdered and put in a sponge he could make a bug Genoese I think he's probably the one that's most likely to do something like that a bug Genoese <laughs> that's something I'd like to taste if he hears this I'm sure he'll do it so maybe I'll mention it mm. to him and uh, yeah, get some feedback <laughs> protein cake <laughs> fantastic I would try it just out of curiosity oh yeah well Andrew congratulations again on getting through to the final uh, and of course to all of the bakers for keeping us entertained for so many weeks now thank um, you very much it's been great fun yeah the, thank you for coming back on the show and best of luck with everything we can't wait to hear what you do next thank you very much